Good morning. Good morning. So good to be together with all of you. We are into now the season of Epiphany. So welcome to all of you while worshiping in person, listening on the radio, and watching via our live stream. It is good to be sanctuaries everywhere. A few announcements for you. Announcement sheets were in the doors when you come in and also on the tables of ministry and happenings that you'll find in the narthex. Some yummy rolls for coffee, so be sure to stop by. Uh, first of all, this Thursday, we will be back at Feeding South Dakota, 9 to noon. Sign up is in the back table. They're trickling in. We have room for a few more, so if that works for you and your schedule, please sign up. One week from today, Annual meeting. January has been about the business and the good news of the church. So the annual meeting will be right after worship. So plan to hang around for a little while as we have that yearly business to tend to as a community of faith. Also, one more reminder, those of you that have first graders in your lives or know of a first grader, next Sunday we will be celebrating the milestone of faith talk cards. So we'll invite our littles up here, little first graders, and they'll get some cards that are those great conversation starters for family or friends. So that is also next Sunday uh, during worship. Check out the other announcements. They're there for you. And with that, I invite all who are able to please stand. I think we need to switch over to our PowerPoint that has, uh, oh, look at that. Here it comes. Our confession and forgiveness. <gasps> oh, yes. As we center ourselves this morning on a beautiful winter day. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. We confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Let's center ourselves. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in the good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Live as free and forgiven children of God. Amen. Our gathering hymn, bind us together in your blue hymnals, blue hymnals 748.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, source of every blessing, you showed forth your glory and led many to faith by the works of your Son, who brought gladness and salvation to his people. Transform us by the spirit of his love, that we may find our life together in him. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Just to come forward. Come on down, kids, if you guys would like. Kids of all ages. Don Sandal, if you want to come join us. <laughs> Jerry, you pointed at me. You should come too. <laughs> so, come down, you guys. Trucks, dinos, monsters, pizza, hashtag awesome. I like that shirt. I like that. How are you guys this morning? You guys are facing that way, aren't you? Yeah? <laughs> How, you know, you know some of my favorite things that Jesus does? Have you guys ever heard of some Jesus miracles? No? I bet, I bet you have. I bet you have. What are, what's a miracle? Do you know what a miracle is? Something that God creates? Yes, yeah, sort of, right? But something that God does, something that we normally just could never explain, right? right? So, yeah, what's that? 
So like, do you, do you know some of them? Do you remember this story where Jesus had a couple fish? What's that? <laughs> we had a couple fish and a few loaves of bread, right? And there were, yeah, and there's hundreds of thousands of people listening to him, right? But they only had a couple fish and a few loaves of bread. And what happened? He took them and he said a prayer. And then his disciples had to hand out people some food, right? And guess what? Yeah, and guess what? They had more than enough to eat. They had tons of food. Is that sort of a miracle? The biggest is biggest. Yeah, the biggest is the biggest, right? Yeah. And then there's some stories of people that are very sick, or uh, there's a story of a man who cannot walk, and Jesus touches him, and he prays, and all of a sudden the guy gets up and takes off dancing and running. Is that a miracle? I know. Yeah, that's a miracle too. You know what happens in today's story? It's, it's, it's uh, mom's and dad's favorite miracle of all time, My I think. mom and dad Oh, you think so? Yeah? Jesus takes water and turns it into wine. Oh, I know. That's why moms and dads love that miracle, I think. Uh, any parents out there like that miracle story? No? Yeah? A few of us, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I bet, yeah. And so he touches the water, it turns to wine. What's wine? <laughs> that is a question for your mom. <laughs> or your dad. Not my dad, not my mom. Oh, your dad, not your mom, okay, well, yeah, it's, it's a really good drink. It, so, you know what would be a miracle for you? What if, well, you guys have like your sippy cup or your cups at home, and you got like water in it, right? I mean, water tastes so good, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah. Sometimes, right? Sometimes it's just like, it's water, right? But what if, what if Jesus touched your cup and all of a sudden it tastes like the best apple juice? Yeah, would that be kind of, would that be a miracle? Now, I can't do that for you, I'm sorry. But maybe Jesus could, right? In fact, I don't think it's maybe. I bet if Jesus really wants to, I bet he could turn your water to apple juice, right? That'd be a miracle, right? Why do you think Jesus does some miracles? Because I do like apple juice. Because you do like apple juice, yes. I love you guys. I think Jesus does miracles so that we can see in the power of what God can do. And that's pretty cool stuff, isn't it? Will you guys say a prayer with me? Will you guys say a prayer? Will you repeat after me? Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to pray. Dear Jesus, we give thanks that you can show us what you can do. You come to this world and you change things, and we see that, and we too are changed. And all of God's children say, amen. Can you guys say amen? Amen. Say it really loud. Amen. Amen, awesome. Will you guys stand up with me? When you guys, will you guys look, at, uh, look out there and put your hands up in the air and repeat after me, the peace of the Lord be with you. Always. And you guys respond? Amen. Uh, you guys can head back to your seats, and we invite our reader to come on down and lead us in Scripture this morning. Jay, is that you? Thank you, Jay. The first reading for Sunday, January 16th, is from Isaiah chapter 62, verses 1 through 5. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation shall burn like a burning torch. The nation shall see your vindication and the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called, my delight is in her and your land married. And the, del the Lord delights in you and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall the builder marry you. 
And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall the God rejoice over you. The word of our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Psalm 36, please read responsibly. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the throng mountains. Your justice is like the great deep. You save humankind and animals, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O Lord, O God, for people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They feast upon the abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your favor to those who are true of heart. The epistle reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray by idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given the spirit of the, the utterance of wisdom, to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various gifts of tongues, to others the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Alleluia verse and the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel comes to us today from the book of John. Glory to you, O Lord. John chapter 2. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it, and when the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Amen. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and His Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning is one of those texts in which we need to make sure that we do not keep God or package God into a box. Today's text is not for those of us who simply believe that Jesus' sole role in the world was to come in and present justice and opportunities of justice. Certainly Jesus came in and he spoke to the justice of God. 
He walked with the oppressed and walked with the poor and identified the fact that as long as we shall live, they shall always be amongst us. But he gave opportunity and he blessed and he healed and he did all of those things. But God was not solely a justice warrior in the flesh. Amen? Nor for those of us who always image or picture Jesus in this image as the healer. Of course, a lot of us will attach ourselves to those stories, and we love those stories, but Jesus was not just a healer as well. Today's text also isn't about just laws and law codes, Jesus showing up and teaching and preaching and reshaping what God is up to. And furthermore, our text this morning might be one that makes all the Scandinavian and evangelical pietists a little bit anxious that all of a sudden Jesus is at a party providing, well, those of you that can do math, six jars of 30 gallons equals what? 180 gallons of wine. Amen? So some of us might get a little anxious about what we do with this story. Today's story is this. It's a celebration. It's a celebration, and it is a party, and it's an epiphany of something even greater. What's an epiphany? It's that aha moment. It is a moment in which something will happen, some experience will happen that will absolutely change the profound thoughts that anyone ever had from there on out. You see, Jesus is at a Jewish wedding party, as it obviously states in our text this morning, and Jewish wedding parties in biblical times would put our wedding wedding receptions to shame. Amen? You don't even know why you're saying amen. (laughs) Because we're not Jewish and we don't understand fully what is up here. We do have, back there, not pointing out, we have a couple that's about to have their wedding reception next weekend. Give them a round of applause. Yes. And I look forward to uh, blessing them and allowing them to enter into that moment. But in the Jewish culture, they would put us to shame. In our wedding receptions of today, and I mean today, like current times, it's almost sometimes disappointing. In fact, there are a lot of family and friends that don't even come to the wedding ceremony, right? The point in which the the bride and the groom, they come together face to face, they make their promises, in the eyes of God and everyone present, we don't even have the courtesy to go to that, but we'll go to the dinner, amen? We'll go to the buffet line with the chicken a la something, or the beef choice, or whatever, you know, whatever we checked on the RSVP card, right? We might come, we might do the dinner, we might have the courage and the courtesy to say our congratulations, our hellos, our goodbyes. We might even have the courage to say hello to a new in-law member of the family. And then even before, heaven forbid, we've got to get out on the dance floor and try a dance for the first time in maybe decades. We skedaddle, amen? Amen. However, in the Jewish wedding, the, the reception, the culture, Seven days. Seven days of the ceremony, seven days of the dancing, seven days of the singing, seven days of the eating, and as we know this morning, seven days of drinking, right? But they did it with honor, they did it with joy, they did it with for, lo- uh, for, for the love of the entire family unit. That is until, of course, the wine runs out. So we have Jesus hanging out at this party. We never really know what he's doing there, other than we do know that he and maybe a few of his earliest disciples, Peter, John, James, Andrew, are invited along, uh, somehow a family connection. But they're, they're at this wedding, and we don't know if Jesus is drinking or dancing. I imagine he must have been partaking in some of the festivities in some way, shape, or form. We can all use our imaginations. In fact, I invite you to use your imaginations. I really would like to think that Jesus, God in the flesh, is not just standing off in the corner thinking, oh boy, here we go. Here we go. We gotta, you know, I am the one sinless being in the world, and uh, I'm just going to sit back in the corner. I'm just going to watch, right? Because cause sometimes, did any of you ever in high school or college at a party, be, did you have to be that guy on that particular evening that sat in the corner? Anyone raise your hands if you were the DD? And none of you have ever been a DD. Shame on all y'all. Right? 
I'm not saying that Jesus is this, but I would like to think that God, the creator of life, the one who brings man and woman together in the institute of marriage, the one that comes together in all of this right here witnessing the culmination of what creation marriage is to be, I would like to think that Jesus is not just standing in a corner, amen? I would like to think that God probably has the biggest smile on his face. Jesus is smiling, he's dancing, maybe he's singing along, and then of course, as we know, the wine runs out. And this is when we pastors are supposed to set everything aside, pull out our Bibles, our commentaries, and we're supposed to explain to you exactly what this means. What does it mean that we ran out of the wine? We ran out of the box Franzia wine. No no offense. We've ran out all these things. and, And now all of a sudden we have Mother Mary coming to Jesus, and she says to Jesus, come on, son. Now is your time to do what you can do. I know you can do something about this. I know that you can help keep this host, this family, from embarrassment. Because if anything about the law, about the Jewish law, has to come to culmination right now, it is the fact that running out of wine and this party coming to an end way too uh, too abruptly is actually a mark, a frown upon that family. It is inhospitable to run out of the food, run out of the drink, run out of that which keeps the party going. And Mary says, Jesus, I know you can do something. And this is where in our culture today we get a little uncomfortable because we hear Jesus say, woman, what does this have to do with me? And we've been taught in our culture to believe that that statement, that engagement, is something uh, disrespectful or rude. It actually is not. If you learn Hebrew and you go and read the Hebrew word for woman that Jesus asserts in this text, it's actually the highest form of respect that Jesus could speak into this moment. So for any of us that are nervous about how he's saying this, because I will all on say I also grew up in a household where I would never address my mother as woman (laughs) Um, Gail Wexler would have a different tone and a look on her face if I said that set that aside when Jesus says woman what does this have to do with me he's lifting her up in respect and he's asking the question why are you making this my moment why is this something that you expect I need to solve My time has not yet come, he says. For Jesus, God in the flesh, he actually doesn't identify this moment as the beginning of all of his ministry moments. And I love it. Mary looks and she says, you, servants, do whatever he asks. And she exits stage left, right? She leaves God in the flesh without a choice. Amen? Amen. So if you don't think that God is okay with us having a relationship and having multiple conversations and pointing things out in our prayer life, yeah, even Mary says, uh, do whatever he asks and just leaves, right? And she does that, and, and then he does what he does next. It's at this moment in which he turns the water into wine. He asks them to take these water jars, these basins, these jars in which, again, by Jewish law, would have been used for the guests to wash their hands, their grimy hands. This is before Dawn dish soap and antibacterial soap. It was dipping your hands in, scrubbing them, and not only that, scrubbing the dishes too, because that is what they had to do to abide by Jewish law, and that is what you get to drink. Sounds great, amen? For those of you, we are a camping community. Any of us love to camp? It, this is like going to the pump station, you know, the gray water? Yeah, that's what we're working with here. We're working with those jars. And Jesus tells him to fill them to the brim. He touches it. And something amazing happens next. So with all the theology aside, with all of the jokes aside, I want you to enter in with this. What does this moment, this miracle, this beginning of public ministry for Jesus, what does any of this mean for us? It means this. What Christ touches becomes better than what it would have normally been. I'll say that again. Whatever Christ touches becomes better than it would have normally been. 
Jesus tells the servants to fill up the six jars, get 30 gallons each with water. These jars would have normally been used for washing before the meals, but now suddenly it's going to be something amazing. It's going to be the most amazing wine that has ever been known to man. It was experienced later on through Christ's touch. So what does this mean for us? Let Christ touch every aspect of of your life because what Christ touches is suddenly better than what it would have normally been for your marriage without Christ in your marriage it will not be nearly as blessed as it normally would have been and I'm not just saying have your wedding in the church oh pastor we've got a Christian wedding we've got a Christian marriage why because we're married in the church ah so what I'm grateful, but so what? What I'm talking about is all of those years of marriage, right? Amen? We have the, the wedding day is a celebration. The whole rest of your life is the day, are the days to be married. Amen? And without Christ at the center of that marriage, we husbands, we wives, we do what we do best. We start to negotiate. We start to manipulate Gun owners out there, we ask for forgiveness instead of permission. Amen? Harley owners out there, similar things, right? Without Christ in the marriage, and I'm talking about having conversations around the dinner table, asking what is God doing with us as a couple? Where do we see God in this? Actually having the courage to sit down and read the Bible together. And gentlemen, I'm going to say this, there is nothing more romantic than actually praying for your spouse out loud. I promise you. And gentlemen, there is something very unique when your wife prays for you out loud as well. When Christ is at the center of your marriage, it will undoubtedly make it better than it would have normally been. For us parents out there, negotiating the family, I beg you and I plead that you allow Christ to touch your family. It is in these moments that we as family need to sit down and have those conversations with our children, to talk about Jesus. It's needed to pray with our kids. Every single night, Carmen and I sit in our daughter's room and we pray with them. And we pray for Elisha, the young man that we've uh, been supporting over in Africa. And, 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 we, and uh, to listen to our daughters pray for Elisha every single night is a gift. To have my daughters come home and talk about the kids at the lunch table, talk about Jesus and Noah, it puts a big smile on my face. But it's needed. As we talk about conversations, as we talk about how many times they're looking at their tablets, looking at the screens, moms and dads, if you're not having having conversation about what your kids are watching on the screens it's your fault amen amen we have those conversations and if we aren't well then we will reap what we sow we'll be just like the jars of hand washing water in the story this morning that only get dumped out in the end without christ in your work your jobs will become restless for some, maybe even meaningless. We might be asking the question, why am I doing this? What's the point? I'm wasting my life when I should be out there living, right? When we're, uh, when we're wrestling with what is my purpose? Well, when Christ is in the center of our work, when Christ is touching our jobs and touching our vocational lives, well, there's not a day that we call it work, amen? In fact, we bring joy. We get to share, we get to use the talents God has given us to change the lives of others. And even now, for us here this morning, if Christ isn't busy touching the church, without Christ, this is just a building, amen? Without Christ, it's a place where we are paying the bills for a structure that's used for a few hours a week. Without Christ, we would just be sitting here week after week going through the motions of what we call church. So let Christ touch your life today. He's always there. He's always present. The gifts in our sacrament of baptism and communion, Christ through the Spirit is always with us. So let us 
recognize that. When you leave here this morning, ask yourself, am I living a life tasting like the best wine that God has to offer, or am I a wash basin where the filth is deposited before the meal? It's a crass image, but I think it's a question we need to ask. And truthfully, it might be a lot harder question to answer than we might think. Christ went to a party as a person, amen? He went to the party as a friend. He went as a relative, but he left them with the greatest gift because he touched their lives, because he touched that water. Can we say the same thing about ourselves? Can the same be said about us from others we might encounter this week? Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite those who are able to please rise. Our hymn of the day is Soul, Adorn Yourself with Gladness, number 488 in a red hymnals, number 488. We declare the mystery of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. 
He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He will sit at right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. What a generous God we have. What a hospitable God we have. And one way that God shows hospitality to us is by giving us what we need and we give in return. Tonight there's a meeting. Uh, about 6.30, I believe. Anyone who is interested to come and talk about the youth group, some of you are actually maybe officially on the youth team, all are welcome to come talk about youth program ongoing in 2022. God gives so we can give back to our kids. No better place to put money. Here is a prayer, an offering prayer, all the ways that we give back to what God gives us, time and treasure and talent. Blessed are you, O God, who offers us new beginnings and guides us on our journey. Lead us to your table. Nourish us with this heavenly food. Prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance. And we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. By your spirit, activate within your church gifts of faith and healing and prophecy. Unite those who profess your name across generations and denominations and geographic boundaries. Open our hearts to recognize and celebrate surprising miracles. Your creation reflects your generosity. Bless farmers and migrant farm workers, orchard keepers, ranchers, all who tend the abundance of the land. Protect food and water sources so all can eat and drink and be satisfied. By your spirit, grant wisdom and knowledge and discernment to those who hold leadership positions at any level. Direct policymakers toward compassionate decisions that build up safe and just communities. Lead all authorities in seeking and serving the common good. As Jesus provided generously in a moment of need, provide generous gifts of healing for those in need this day. We pray for all on our prayer lists, especially Lorraine Elwine and Rosemarie Gores. We pray for all who grieve, especially Julia Abraham and her family in the death of Julia's grandma. Provide abundantly for all who are hungry or thirsty or seeking shelter and all who seek peace. God of grace, hear our prayer. You see us for who we are. You delight in us, including times of celebration, such as weddings and birthdays and graduations and reunions and anniversaries and baptisms. You put yourself with love and compassion and hospitality within all our stories. You touch them all. You walk daily with us. Embrace those struggling with self-worth, wrestling with self-identity, facing significant life transition, or dealing with addiction. Remind us that nothing can separate us from your love. Holy One, you bless us through the spiritual gifts of the saints who have gone before us. We give thanks for the life of Martin Luther King Jr., whose life we honor tomorrow and all who have modeled the way of courageous faith. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink. And he said, in this cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. As we gather together at this table, let us also gather together in the prayer our Lord first taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All are welcome to this table. Again, a reminder, our communion is through intinction. You'll be given a wafer. The red liquid is the wine. The white liquid is the grape juice, so you can dip it in. Uh, if you are in need of the gluten-free option, that is front and center as you walk on past. All are welcome to the table. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen.
I invite those who are able to please rise. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and give you peace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy, you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. God who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. Amen. We're sending him as songs of thankfulness and praise, number 310 in your red hymnal. into a weary world, share the good news. Thanks be to God. This concludes our Sunday morning worship service from Lutheran Memorial Church in Pierre. Join us for worship on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m., Saturday evenings at 5.30 p.m. for our contemporary service, or Wednesdays at 6.15 p.m. If you are unable to attend our, any of our three worship services, you are invited to tune in to our live radio broadcast at 9 a.m. each Sunday morning on KGFX 1060 a.m., 103.1 FM, or on drgnews.com by clicking Listen Live. Sunday and Wednesday services are also live streamed on our LMC Facebook page. You can catch our sermon podcast on our website under the Connect tab. 
This morning's broadcast was brought to you by Carmen Hyde in memory of her husband Darwin and son Kim. Our radio broadcasts rely on financial support from members of Luther Memorial and other regular listeners and viewers. If you would like to sponsor a radio broadcast in honor of a special occasion or in memory of a loved one, please contact the church office at 224-8608. Now on behalf of Pastor Craig Wexler, Deacon Chris Woolman, and the Congregation of Luther Memorial Church, we extend our prayers to you and yours for God's care and guidance throughout the coming week.